And now we're going to go back and open up our test file with the figure in it with the arm so we can start testing out these brushes and see how they look. So I am going to be using my default custom brush which is based off the ink brush. It's the Ink 3G pen. So if you're following along, you can go ahead and click on that or if you have already if you already have a custom ink brush, you can go ahead and use that as well. So up here where this white box is, that's just I don't have an icon for my current brush that I've made, so it's just blank. We're going to go to um, this and change the pattern. This is how it looks. Don't worry about any of these settings right now. We're just going to worry about importing these brushes. So we, we're going to go to predefined. All right, so we're going to go to import here on the bottom and we're going to go to our folder that we had just saved our PNGs in. Now that we have the folder, go ahead and import whichever one you'd like. I'm going to start with the round. And as you can see, it hasn't changed the pattern. Right now it's on the old one. And that's because we haven't picked it yet. So go back up to your brush settings and go all the way down here and we can find the circle. And as you can see in the preview, it has completely changed. Now the spacing isn't perfect, so we need to fix this. There are two things you can do. You can um, increase the spacing so that there is no uh, overlap or if you'd like a easier effect on yourself, you can decrease the spacing so there's just enough overlap it looks like they're linking together, like that. Another thing I'm gonna do is turn off the size because chain links, they're not really any different in size. And this definitely decreased the spacing in between, so I'm gonna actually increase that a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna leave that in our brush. So if we leave the brush pretty large in size, that's obviously too big for us, right? We'll just start making our stroke. It's still too small. And the spacing doesn't look great, but that could be the size of the brush. Let's go to 25. Not perfect. Let's go to 30. I think that's actually a good size, but I don't like the spacing, so we're going to actually reduce that spacing a little more. I think we're going to go back to 2.5. So at this point, you're just kind of tweaking the settings to get a, a good starting point for your uh, brush pattern. So go ahead and play with the settings a little bit until you get to a spot that you want, and I will see you in a few minutes. Alright, so as you can see, I added my strokes in. I'm liking how this looks so far. And to see the chainmail better, I put some color for the arm. If you haven't done that already, open up the group, go to the arm color layer, and go ahead and fill that with whatever color you want. It doesn't have to be perfect, just add some color down. And now we're going to go back up to our chainmail layer here, and we're going to see how this looks with a little bit of reflection, rather adding some lighting to it. <clears throat> We're just going to blend that together. So obviously at first glance, it doesn't look all that great, right? It's a little muddied. And part of that is because this is a very a solid black chain that we made, and there's not much gradient to it. We're going to go ahead and open up our chainmail uh, brush file, and we're going to add a little bit of reflection to this. So we're going to add some white here, and then we're going to add a little bit of some grays just to give it some depth. Actually, we don't want pure white either. And light gray. So remember, white is an alpha, which means it won't show up. And then we can just blur this. All right, so that looks pretty decent for our gauge and blur. And we are going to save this now oops, as a PNG. We need to turn our image properties, our background opacity down. And before we save it as a PNG, we would like to save this as a create a file, so we're just going to go ahead and save, and then save as to the PNG. Alright, and just as we did before, we're going to set up our brush with that new um, or pattern that we just made under the brush settings, importing that, and making sure it's selected. So I'm going to close that, make a new layer. Alright, so as you can see, you can zoom in here, We've got a little bit of depth going on. It's not perfect. We can actually just go in. The regular brush 
and start refining some of this, right? Just down the middle here. Now, if you want to make these chains thicker, you can. This is the point where we're just kind of testing it out and revising it based on what we're seeing here. And you can even duplicate the layer to make it darker. You can overlay it, we can multiply it. Um, you can do some crazy stuff with the layer settings. Right, and that's how you can do it for this brush here. Now obviously we got two more options to do, so we're gonna go over those really quick. The same method that we did before. So go ahead and import those. You can actually import one after the other. Make sure our size is off. Okay, so once we have our brush pattern loaded in for either the vertical or the horizontal, this should work either way, we're gonna wanna go to our general over here and look at the rotation. What we wanna do is make sure that when we make one stroke, that this reverse is gonna make the second stroke. We're gonna do that by the drawing angle. So this is the graph here that will work for us. This should be able to work either way. This is what I have. So if we test this out, you can see that it makes a pretty nice stroke here. Actually move this up, it down all the way. Okay, pretty good. A little bit of lag on my end, that's just me. But that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna use this brush for our chain mail. So we're gonna make a stroke this way and this way. So as you can see, it's not perfect. And given that we're at an angle for the arm, we're gonna have a little, we're gonna have to kinda figure out where we wanna start. And you can see the pattern here, hopefully you can see that, that as I move, I can see my starting point. So if you rotate your image, it won't affect the way the brush is. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. And you can see it's making some pretty nice patterns. And this is really small, so it'd probably be better to go ahead and raise that up, but this is pretty good for now, just to show you guys how to make this work. And this is not solid black, because I did not change my color to black. This is a gray, but that's fine. Or we're just kinda can keep repeating, and if you get a nice repeating pattern already, you can go ahead and even duplicate that so you don't have to keep making the same strokes. We'll go ahead and just duplicate the layer and transform it and move this down, right? And worry about the detail of that later. So this will definitely work as well. As you can see, when we zoom out, it kinda has that nice chainmail pattern already. Obviously my strokes are a little distanced. I'm sure if you move this up a little more, you can make it, it overlay and give some more depth to it. I'm just going to merge that with my layer below, lock the transparency, and go back to my original brush settings and start adding in some, some uh, lighting and shine and all that fun stuff here. So if we zoom out, you can get the illusion that this is a chainmail pattern. Obviously you can decrease the spacing in between, you can make the brush bigger, but make it smaller. Uh, what I did before in the image I'll put up here. I actually overlaid a lot of this, so I put multiple strokes of my brush in underneath, so it gave it a little bit more depth. And then I just went to the arm, because I could actually even make this darker. So you can see that the chainmail is under making that shadow. Whoop. Blend that a little. And we can go back in and continue making some adjustments to the way the lighting looks on our um, uh, chainmail. And this is really just a lot of work just to tweak it and get it going. So that's two ways we can make our chainmail brush. Alright, so we have one more pattern to go over, so we're going to go ahead and group these just to Hide them, turn the eye off, minimize that, and go back up to our brush settings. So I had already closed Krita and I opened it back up so my patterns got rearranged, but they are still there. So if you import a bunch of new patterns and you close Krita and open it back up and you don't see it maybe at the bottom where it was before, it's still there, you know, just it got rearranged. Okay, so we've increased the size of our brush here. 
We turn the size off and we leave everything else the same. I don't need to change anything else. We're not going to be doing the same as the last one where we're having it alternate. And this is going to be very similar to what I had before. Which I'll put the image back up here <laughs> to make the chain mail to begin with. So right now this is kind of big. We're going to minimize that. Let's see. This should be good. So that spacing is a little too big. So we are going right, to so fix the spacing. So now since we have our color back to all black, I'm going to rotate this just a smidge and start making my strokes and seeing how this looks. Back, we got that. A couple of strokes. I have two layers here. I have my first layer, which is the initial strokes, and I have the additional layer on top just to give it a little bit more depth. So if we zoom out here, this has a nice chainmail type scaly metal effect already on the arm. Obviously, we need to go in and work the lighting and everything better. This is all just a quick breakdown, and we'll go over adding more detail and refining our patterns and the final look in the next video. But so far, as you can see, this is a pretty good start to what we need to do. And then if you want to make it um, rotate based on the shoulder, you can go back up and play with the rotation settings, drawing angle, not pressure. I'm just gonna test it out to see how this is gonna look for us. Okay, so for the sake of the tutorial, this is the curve that I have right here, and this is pretty close to the result I'm looking for. So if you wanna go ahead and copy that, I use the rotation, drawing angle, and this is the curve. So the first is at zero, whoops, there we go. The middle is at 219, at 55 here, and the last is at 97 and 360. We're gonna close that. There we go. It's not perfect. Needs some refining, but you get the idea for the, the purpose of this video. So we can go ahead and finish that off and then complete or er, continue layering it to add more of an effect. Alright, so as you can see how it's layered, now yeah, I've started to get that effect already. That's basically the outcome that we're looking for, right? So for now, we're just gonna leave everything as is. Because right now we basically just got used to bringing in the brushes, um, learning how to get them to work, how to change the brush settings on them to orient differently or repeat the pattern um, by going in a different direction depending on our strokes, and really just kind of getting a feel for how we can utilize these brushes to, you know, our needs. First option we went over is the actual rings. And as you can see, it has a very dark, um, heavier look to it. And for some situations, you may want that that um, textured look, right? And we will have to go over how to make that shine better because obviously, as it is, it's not you know the greatest blending. It's not the greatest final look. But for starters, this is actually not a bad brush to use. And if we zoom in, just so you can see which brush or pattern we used, it was the ring. In the next video, we're going to go over refining this, making it a little bit thicker, and adding more control for the, the um, shading and light. The second option was a horizontal curve. Or, I'm sorry, not a horizontal, a vertical curve, which uh, the pattern changed differently depending which way we went with our stroke. And this gave us an, an interesting result as well. Again, we still need to go back and refine how the final look is going to be um, with the shading and lighting and get that more consistent because right now it's just a little, um, a little muddy. But for starters, this is actually a good starting point as well because we can still go back and refine that, layer it up, and make a really neat chainmail effect. As we zoom out, you can start seeing it's got that look to it, right? And the last is the one that I use, which was the horizontal curve, which looks a little bit more like scales, but for all intents and purposes, it has a really neat effect to it. It still gives the illusion that we're putting chainmail together and giving that armored look, right? Which is the final look that I used here, which we can zoom in. It's a low res image that I saved out, but you can see here on the arm, it's got that scaled look, right? 
all through here. So those are three patterns that we can use. Hopefully you guys were able to import them all successfully, get them started, start getting the settings going with them. Uh, whichever option you like to use, uh, keep um, practicing those strokes and make sure to save that brush if you really like it so far. If not, that's okay. You don't need to save anything. In the next video, we're going to go over how to refine those patterns, how to make them better, and um, re-import them and all that fun stuff and really get a nice scale armor done for this arm, make it look good, get the shading and lighting done, you know, all the fun stuff. So I have one more video after this. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I'll try to help you out. Or if you have a different method that you'd like to see for the chainmail that I can probably sneak in for the next video or as an extra, let me know. And make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the last video for this, which will be the fourth one in this series where we can just refine everything and really bring this together. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.